your 3D printer is haunted by an artifact called ghosting. And in this video, I'll show you what ghosting looks like and how to fix it. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makey's Muse. Now there are many print artifacts that you might get on your 3D printed models, but in my opinion, none are as annoying and hard to predict as ghosting, a print artifact that causes the surface of your model to display echoes of previous features, hence why it's also known as echoing or rippling or ringing. Yes, 3D printing has a lot of jargon in it. The thing about ghosting though is that some areas of your models might look fantastic while some might look absolutely terrible depending on the area. But what actually causes it in the first place? Well, to test it, I created this, the Maker's Muse Ghosting Test. Now, there are many files available online designed to calibrate and test your 3D printer, but this is Maker's Muse. I make my own files. It's intentionally designed to induce ghosting artifacts as severely as possible in a 3D printer. So I'm gonna print it on my Cetus on the fastest setting. And this is the result. You can clearly see the ghosting effect caused by small movement changes which fade away over a distance and areas like the embossed logo or debossed text seriously suffer from it, making these areas difficult to read, and in this case, pretty much unreadable. But what's causing this? Well, as you might have guessed, ghosting is caused by something called resonance. When 3D printing, your machine moves objects of mass around a great speed, you know, your extruder, is quite heavy, and these rapid accelerations and decelerations result in moments of inertia. So when your machine quickly changes directions, these movements cause the 3D printer's frame to actually flex slightly and resonate and, resonate and move, which introduces inaccuracies in the actual physical 3D printed part as it's being created. So as much as I love my Cetus, it has a cantilever design holding the extruder head, which lacks the same level of rigidity that other 3D printers have. This means that vibrations are not quickly deadened and instead decay slowly, as can be clearly seen on the ghosting test. Now, different combinations of movements, speeds, and directions can result in different ghosting artifacts so honestly, it can be really frustrating to try to figure out what's causing it and come up with a solution. So in my experience with ghosting artifacts, quick sharp angle changes are bad. However, small details such as in the ghosting test, the text create really, really noticeable ghosting artifacts. So we know what ghosting in 3D printing is, but how do we stop it? Well, there's a few methods you can try out. First and easiest solution is just to print slower. Less speed means a lower moment of inertia. And this test done the Cetus in fine mode shows just how big a difference it can make. The other option is to make your machine physically more rigid through the addition of braces, which help triangulate the frame or additional mass to the chassis, not to the extruder head, to deaden vibrations. And also you can consider shock mounting your entire 3D printer with foam or rubber to also help deaden those vibrations. And it also helps make your 3D printer quieter. Making your movement components lighter will also help. So for example, if you have a dual extruder 3D printer, but you only print with one nozzle, maybe consider removing that second extruder altogether, including the very heavy redundant stepper motor. These things all go towards making the, the extruder carriage much lighter and helping to reduce the artifacting that you get on your 3D prints. The last thing to consider changing is your 3D printer's acceleration and jerk settings in firmware. So honestly, I wouldn't do this unless it's the last resort, as changing things in firmware without a solid understanding can make things much worse. However, if your machine has two radical acceleration curves, then it can jerk around and create really high ghosting artifacts. So a gentle acceleration can help reduce this, but it's definitely no substitute to a rigid deadened frame, at least in my opinion. It's also worth noting that if your 3D print has consistent surface artifacts which don't seem influenced by the 3D print and the details of that 3D print, then you might have issues elsewhere. For example, you might have a faulty linear bearing or if you're getting artifacts in the Z direction, for example, like a wobbly vertical wall, it's most likely a bad lead screw or loose belt. These are different issues and they're not caused by what causes ghosting. And if you're interested, this is the result I got on the Prusa Mark III 
printing at 0.15 millimeter default settings. And it definitely does a really good job compared to the Cetus at higher speeds. Although there is small, a few small amounts of ghosting and other print artifacts, but it's actually a fairly decent print. And my review of the Prusa Mark III is definitely coming soon. You can download my ghosting test here uh, for free and make sure to let me know how you go by tweeting it at me at Makers Muse. And if you found this video useful guys, I would love to have you subscribe. My aim is to empower your creativity with technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.